This is a traffic jam at the entrance of the Panama Canal. A major traffic jam. More than 200 ships are currently waiting to cross the canal. The number of ships that is allowed to transit has been drastically reduced by as much as 50% in the first months of 2024. In your 40-year career, you've never seen anything like this. No. But to make matters worse, each vessel is allowed to carry 40% less weight. This prompted some ships to unload their cargo and to move it by rail to the other side. These unprecedented measures were taken by the Panama Canal Authority. They raised the alarm about a crucial artificial lake in Panama's inland. This was already in July 2023, but since then it has only gotten worse. We have vessels waiting outside for almost three weeks. This is an economic disaster. It's disrupting global trade routes during an already difficult period for shipping companies. And for the United States, who transits 40% of all their container traffic through this canal, the biggest blow is yet to come. What is going on here? This is whether the Panama Canal is dying with hindsight. Our story starts in France with a genius engineer. Ferdinand de Lesseps was praised nationwide for his work on the Suez Canal. The canal was opened a few years prior and was now generating massive profits for its investors, turning de Lesseps into a national hero. In 1880, he announced that he would be working on another project. He would dig a similar canal in Panama relying on many of the same techniques that had proven to work so well in Egypt. Investors were eager to get on board. De La Sebe had visited Panama only a few times. He wanted to dig a canal from ocean to ocean through the mountainous inland, but he soon realized that this was going to be a much bigger challenge than he had previously thought. Panama is covered in a dense jungle. Little was known at that time about tropical diseases and how they spread and the small rivers that they were working on were turning into raging torrents during the rainy season. Three years into the project, the construction was costing the lives of hundreds of workers each month, mostly from tropical diseases. They were going over budget, and the feasibility of the canal was being questioned. In France, however, De La Sebe downplayed these setbacks to reinsure its investors. But after eight years and little progress, they went bankrupt. And that's when the truth came to light. Stories broke about millions being paid in bribes, about corruption, scandals. It all came out and prominent officials were sentenced to long jail sentences, most of which were later overturned. But that dream of building a canal never disappeared. For a ship in Florida to reach China, they can take the route around the Cape Horn, which takes 41 days. But if they travel through the Panama Canal, it only takes them 35 days. This is by far the fastest and the least expensive way for trade between the United States East Coast and East Asia. Around the year 1900, the United States was showing a keen interest. Panama was still a province of Colombia. And in 1903, the United States government made a deal with the Colombians to lease the land to build the canal they would pay a one-time fee of $10 million, in addition to an annual payment. But the deal wasn't ratified by the Colombian Senate, who was hoping to negotiate better conditions. That's when the United States shifted gears. A few months later in Panama, separatists declared independence from Colombia. The Colombians were swift to respond, but were held back by the US Coast Guard, who denied them entry. There was nothing that Colombia could do Panama gained independence, and only a few days later, the United States was granted the rights to build and indefinitely administer the canal zone. They purchased the French assets, and they started building. A key component of their plan was to build the largest dam in the world. This would block a large river running through Panama's mainland, and this would eventually create the largest man-made lake in the world. They then continued with building locks, these locks raise ships to the height of the lake, which is about 26 meters above sea level. 
Locks on the other side of the lake would then lower the shifts back to sea level. The remaining challenge though was that there was a mountain range on the Atlantic side. This was about 15 kilometers wide and had a tallest point of 100 meters. The United States in those years was the world leader of industrial manufacturing. They designed and deployed the biggest and most advanced machinery in the world in their attempt to cut through these mountains. They used steam-powered cranes and giant rock crushers. They had to move millions of cubic meters of dirt, which then had to be transported and distributed elsewhere. They built these custom steam shovels and this track shifter, which allowed them to quickly reposition the train track. This was by far the largest American engineering project in history, and in 1914, it was completed. A ship that transits the canal from the Pacific side first enters the Miraflores locks. Tugboats position the ship and the gates are closed. The operator then opens the sluice, letting water flow in by force of gravity. This process is repeated for each of the locks until the ship reaches Gatun Lake. The drive through the lake provides scenic views of the Panamanian inland. On the other side, the same process is repeated in reverse. Ships with a length up to 1200 meters can transit, which means that nearly 97% of the world's container fleet can transit. The canal was owned and administered by the United States until 1977. It was then gradually transferred to Panama, who gained full control in the year 2000. It is a true marvel of engineering, but it has one fatal flaw. Each time that the ship passes through these locks, about 50 million gallons of fresh water is lost from the lake. That's roughly how much water 2,000 people use in an entire year. This process is repeated dozens of times per day, and it wouldn't be an issue if it was compensated with sufficient rainfall. And that's where the problem lies. 2023 was the driest year in Panama's history since records began in 1950. Over the past five years, the average water level in November was 26 meters. It is normal for the water level to drop during the winter months and then to rise again in the summer. But this year, the water level continued to drop. By November, it was two meters lower than the average height for this month during the past five years. Severe drought is drying up the lakes that feed the canal, plunging water levels so low they've had to cut the number of vessels passing through, delaying goods, and creating a growing waiting room of ships out at sea. At the time of writing, mid-November 2023, there are only two months left in the rainy season, and the torrential rains still haven't come. This drought is in part caused by El Nino. In July 2023, the Panama Canal Authority raised the alarm. If this year's rainy season doesn't raise the water level sufficiently, that could become catastrophic during next year's dry season. This would impact the canal's operation and shipping, but also over half of Panama's population who depend on this lake for fresh water. In July, the number of ships that is allowed to transit was lower. In September, and then again in November, further reductions were announced. And these will be in effect until at least February 2024. Record droughts and record low water levels are becoming increasingly frequent. Two out of the driest El Nino periods in the past 140 years occurred during the last quarter century, and this one could be the third. Panama already spent billions on new and improved locks that can reclaim up to 60% of the water that is lost during transit, and they're motivating dual transits whenever that's possible. These improvements already cost the Panamanian government billions of dollars, but it might not be enough. For shipping companies, it is boiling down to an expensive calculus. Large container ships pay around $400,000 for transit. With these types of delays, companies can bid during an auction to skip the line. Some companies pay hundreds of thousands of dollars extra to avoid having to wait. In August 2023, a ship paid $2.4 million to jump ahead of the queue. And that record was broken in November when a Japanese ship paid nearly $4 million. If this problem persists or gets worse, some companies might choose to avoid the risk of waiting and take the longer route. This would result in increased greenhouse gas emissions and it would raise the cost of shipping, which at least partly will be passed on to the consumer. But there are potential solutions as well. 
The board of the canal recently proposed building a new reservoir from the Indio River. One proposal was to build three dams that would close this river. The rainfall from this entire drainage area would over time create a lake. This water would then be transferred to the Gatun Lake through a tunnel. This project would cost about $900 million and construction could start at the beginning of 2025. The additional water that this would generate would allow for another 12 to 15 passages daily. The biggest challenge, however, is that this would displace the people that are currently living in this area and it would require the acquisition of protected lands. But without a new water source, the canal would lose significant amounts of business. It could stoke interest in building land routes through Mexico, Colombia, or other countries with coastlines on both oceans. The Panama Canal crisis comes at a challenging time for shipping companies. The higher oil prices have already led to a massive freight recession. Danish shipping giant Maersk recently announced the layoff of more than 10,000 people worldwide. The efforts to secure new water and sustain the canal is a race against climate change and it requires the ingenuity and technical inventiveness that led to the construction of this canal over a century ago. These are two videos I selected for you to watch next.